I think it'll be strange for me and for everybody in, in my family to watch it. I mean, my mum keeps saying, who's going to be playing me? <laughs> it started off with me tracing my birth father and that became such a strange and unusual experience. I already felt as if I was a character in a novel and that my life was a story that was happening to me. And there was no point in making up fiction about it because the truth was already quite stranger than fiction and quite fantastic enough. And so I became completely um, interested in, in that really essential question, what makes us who we are? Is it what we're handed down or is it um, a mixture of myth and porridge? So I'm about five and a half in that one. I like the hairdo, <laughs> it's a crazy hairdo. I was fascinated because I found my father, birth father, quite easily. He's from Nigeria and I found him surprisingly easily. I put his name into Google and up popped Pop. And the reason that Pop popped up so quickly is because he's a leading ethnobotanist. He's a world tree specialist. So that seemed really bizarre that there was I tracing my family tree and I should find this tree specialist father. And that was the first thing that made me think that if I put it in a novel, everyone would think it was far too far fetched. I can't imagine. I mean, I don't envy uh, them. That's why I chose not to adapt it myself. <laughs> I really like the idea that you create something and then on top of your creation, other people come and create. And I like the idea of them having artistic freedom. Um, but I also really like the idea that it, that it does, that it's faithful to the spirit of my book. I think theatre can suddenly bring something into the moment, into the present moment, and theatre is a form that can deal so well with time and with juxtaposing times and to make everything a kind of a present. And I think that that's, that's theatre's great strength, that it can make audiences feel so affected by things that they feel like they're part of that journey, that it is actually something that's happening to them. In other words, that they're not passive watchers anymore, that they're not sitting kind of with something happening uh, to them. It's something that they're actively involved in. So people are, 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 are coming in flocks to art and theatre to try and make some sense of the world, because when it comes to the really deep, deep questions that we ask ourselves about not just what makes us who we are, but what makes the world the way it is and what chances of change are there in this world that we live in and how can we affect change? How can we contribute to it? How can we make it happen? These answers are all creative. And it's not just that people come from all around the world and find it really exciting. It's more that people actually get nourished and thrive off that intense creative um, broth that is a festival and everybody's able to have a big spoon and <laughs> a big spoon of it and they find in that big broth there's great nutrients, these things that are good for you, these things that, are, that make you feel healthy and these things that nourish your soul. So there's all sorts of different ways that I think Red Dust Road could be um, interesting for people and if it just made them feel uh, not alone and made them feel bold uh, and courageous in their life in one way or another, then that would be, that would be a fantastic outcome.